Unit 7. Gateway. Not only musicians and psychologists, but also committed music enthusiasts and experts often voice the opinion that the beauty of music lies in an expressive deviation from the exactly defined score. Concert performances become interesting and gain in attraction from the fact that they go far beyond the information printed in the score. In his early studies on musical performance, Carl Seashore discovered that musicians only rarely play two equal notes in exactly the same way. Within the same metric structure, there is a wide potential of variations in tempo, volume, tonal quality, and intonation. Such variation is based on the composition, but diverges from it individually. We generally call this expressivity. This explains why we do not lose interest when we hear different artists perform the same piece of music. It also explains why it is worthwhile for following generations to repeat the same repertoire. New, inspiring interpretations help us to expand our understanding, which serves to enrich and animate the music scene. Exercise 1 If you're stuck developing an idea, or even thinking of one, get unstuck by literally getting away from your desk. Go for a walk, exercise, bring your work somewhere else. Physical movement has been shown to have a positive effect on creative thinking. The philosopher and author Henry Thoreau claimed that his thoughts began to flow the moment my legs began to move. Now scientists have discovered that taking part in regular exercise, such as going for a walk or riding a bike, really does improve creative thought. Professor Lorenza Colzato, a cognitive psychologist at Leiden University in the Netherlands, found in her 2013 study that people who exercised four times a week were able to think more creatively than those with a more sedentary lifestyle. One of my course sessions, an observation lab, is held outdoors, and the students love the walk and change in environment as they brainstorm possible solutions while moving across our campus. Exercise 2 Cosmology would not exist as a subject unless there were such a thing as the universe to explain. Instead of finding that space is filled with a dog's breakfast of unrelated bric-a-brac, astronomers see an orchestrated and coherent unity. On the largest scale of size, there is order and uniformity. Stars and galaxies billions of light-years away closely resemble those in our astronomical backyard and are distributed in much the same way everywhere. Their compositions and motions are similar. The laws of physics appear to be identical as far out in space as our instruments can penetrate. In short, there is cosmos rather than chaos. This basic fact is crucial for our existence. Life could not emerge, still less evolve, to the point of intelligence in chaos. It is also, or at least it was until recently, deeply mysterious. Why should the totality of things be organized so systematically? To find the answer to this intriguing question, we need to understand how the universe began and work out how it evolved over billions of years to attain its present orderly and life-encouraging form. Exercise 3 Ideally, business requires a stable environment within which to operate. Yet, the framework of law which governs business activities is subject to constant change. The burden of keeping up to date may be eased slightly by making use of professional people such as an accountant or solicitor to advise on the latest developments in such areas as tax or company law. Nevertheless, the businessman will still need to keep himself informed of general legal changes which will affect his day-to-day -day running of the business. 
If he employs others in his business, he will need to keep up to date on such matters as health and safety at work, the rights of his employees, and his duties as an employer. If he sells goods direct to the consumer, he must be aware of changes in consumer protection law. Almost every aspect of his business will be subject to legal regulation, and the law could always change. Exercise 4. In absolute terms, the overall demand for doctors and teachers is much larger than that for professional athletes. Education and health care make up huge chunks of the U.S. economy. Health care, measured as a percentage of GDP, is in the double digits and growing. By contrast, despite the attention paid to it, professional sports is nowhere near as big. In relation to the number of practitioners in each field, however, the demand for athlete services is much larger than in either health care or education. The source of that demand is that hundreds of millions of people enjoy watching these sports, whether in person or on television. Fans will pay as much as hundreds of dollars per ticket to attend, while advertisers will pay literally billions of dollars to broadcasters that can deliver mass audiences for sports. The world might well be a better place if people paid less attention to spectator sports and more to reading, hiking, declaiming poetry, or practicing Zen meditation. But the fact is that at the current stage of human development, large numbers of people do enjoy pro sports, and that creates significant income for the industry.